Next Gen Conservative Radio Network. You are about to enter the analysis zone. Where political correctness is non-existent. Non-existent. Where critical thinking skills are required. Required. And conservative common sense reigns supreme. Supreme. And now, broadcasting live from Next Gen Conservative Central Command, it's the Whitfield Analysis. And your host is Sam Whitfield. Folks, and welcome to part two of the Whitfield Analysis Chris Dorner Exposed Special. I'm Sam Whitfield. Here, if you haven't heard the first part, well, if you're listening to uh, this segment live, then please go back and listen to part one, which is now a podcast. This evening, I've been uh, reading parts, skimming through the Chris Dorner Manifesto. I haven't read every single paragraph. The uh, The manifesto comes from my Fox LA, and I posted a link to my Twitter feed earlier in the evening, um, and you can find it there. If you're not on Twitter... Um, it, or if you don't follow me on Twitter, uh, you can follow me at SamW underscore NGC. So anyway, go check out the article there. Anyway, let's get back to this manifesto. Um, So, probably about the... Uh, I'm probably about... I'm probably about on the 14th paragraph. This manifesto is long, so I'm just going to pick up from where I left off. Um, no one is saying that you can't be pre that you can't be prejudiced or a bigot. We are all human and hold prejudices. If you state that you don't have prejudices, you're lying. But when you act on it and victimize innocent citizens and, and fellow innocent officers, then it is a concern. For you officers who do your name in the na- who do your job in the name of justice, those of you who lost honest officers to this event. Look at the name of those on the BR and the investigating officers from PSB and Evans and ask them, how come you couldn't tell the truth? Why did you terminate an honest officer and cover for a dishonest officer who victimized a mentally ill citizen? Again, he is scapegoating in order to justify his reason for murder. Sometimes humans feel a need to prove that they are the dominant race of a species and that they and they inadvertently take kindness for weakness from another individual. You chose wrong. Terminating officers because they exposed a culture of lying racism from the academy and excessive use of force will immediately change. PSB B cannot police their own, and they have been, pr- and that has been proven. The blue line f- will be forever served on a cultural change. W- will will be forever severed, and a cul- cultural change will be implanted. You have woke and a sleeping giant. Sorry, for someone who claim. By the way, folks, this guy later down in the manifesto claims to have excellent grammar 
For someone who has excellent grammar, I've had to fill in a lot of typos here. Just saying. Anyway, um, next paragraph. I'm here to change and make policy. The culture of the Los Angeles P Police Department versus the community and honest good of the An honest and good officer needs to change and will change. I am here to correct and calibrate your moral compass to true north. You're not the one who can force people to change their moral compass, dude. Only they can do that. I'm not sure why I'm talking to this guy, because he's dead, but for whatever reason I am. Go figure. Um, uh, let's see. He's basically... Now, see, he's basically... Now, see, he's basically, um, saying... Now, see, he's basically saying that no matter what race you are, if you're a cop, I'm going to come and kill you. Then he's saying to the citizens, you've got to take a look at this. This is actually creepy. Um, okay. Those of you who, quote-unquote, go along to get along have no backbone and destroy the foundation of courage. You are enablers of those who are guilty of misconduct. You are just as guilty of those who break the code of ethics and oath you swore. Okay, this get, and that's not very creepy, but take a look at this. This gets even creepier. Citizens slash non-combatants. Do not, do not render medical aid to downed officers slash enemy combatants. They would not do the same for you. They will let you bleed out just so, uh, just so they can brag to other officers. Officers that had 187 caper the other day and can't wait to uh, to accrue the overtime and future court subpoena. As they always say, that's the paramedic's job, not mine. What the balance of life? What what the balance of loss of life take place? Sometimes a reset needs to occur. He's basically saying. Forget your civic duty. Let these cops die. This guy is crazy. If you can't, if you can't see this, then you're equally crazy. Next paragraph. It 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 is endless the amount of time times per week officers arrest an individual labor him as label him a suspect arrestee to defend it and then before arraignment and trial realize that he's innocent based on evidence you know what they say when they realize an innocent man has just had his life turned turned upside down well i guess he should have stayed at home that he was discovered walking down the street and matching the suspect to Description. Oh well, he appeared to be a dirtbag anyway. Meanwhile, the falsely accused is left to pick up his life, get a new, get a new, family, friends, and sense of self worth. Worth. Okay. Here is this gets even creepier. Don't honor these fallen officers slash dirtbags. When your family members die, they just see you as extra overtime at a crime scene and at a perimeter. Why would you value their lives when they, cl when they clearly don't value yours or your family members' lives? I've heard many officers who state that they see dead victims as ATV warver runners, RVs, and new clothes for their kids. Why would you shed a shed a tear for them when they in turn crack a smile f for your loss because of the, of the impending extra money they will re receive in their next paycheck for si 
hitting out your life one's crime scene for six hours because of the overtime they were a crew. They take photos of your loved ones, recently deceased bodies, with their cell phones and play a game of who has the most graphic dead body of the night with officers from other divisions. This isn't just the 20-something-year-old officers. This is the 50-year-old officers with significant time on the jaw, job who do, th who do this as well. Okay, he, he lists more officers. And then he... And then, this is where... This is the heart of the matter where I really wanted to get to. Okay. Okay, he admits to being a cop killer. Okay, first of all, in this paragraph. Let me just, just read this for you. No one grows up and wants to be a cop killer. It is against everything I ever was. As a young police officer, as a young police explorer, I found my calling in life. But as a young police officer, I found that these violent suspects on the streets are not only people you have to watch, it is the officer who was hired on the, onto the department pre-2000 before Paul Gass were standard for only hires in substantial vetting and a background investigation. To, uh, to those children, to those children of the officers who are, erad who are eradicated, your parent was not in the, the individual you thought they were. As you get older, you will see the evidence that your parent was a tyrant who lost, who lost their ethos and instead followed the path of more corruptness. They conspired to hide and suppress the truth of misconduct on others' behalf. Your parent will have your parent will have a name and plaque on the Fallen Officers Memorial in DC. But in all honesty, your parents' name will be a reminder to other officers to maintain the or they swell and stay along the shoreline that have guided them from childhood to that of a local, state or federal law enforcement officer. Okay, how dare he? How dare he? He... He attacks the children of the fallen officers and basically says, yeah, forget that you're mourning the loss of your, of your parents. Your parents are scumbags. F them. That's what he has just stated. That is what he has just stated, and it is sickening, folks. It is absolutely sickening. All right, enough ranting for now. Let's get back to this. Basic. Okay, basically, though... Um, Anyway, folks, this manifesto is long. It's but later on, this guy uh, goes on to political stuff, and he basically admits that he's a liberal. Now, if you want to know why I brought this up, and the reason why I did a show, here's why. In all honesty, folks, there have been some conservatives out there 
who have not many, but some conservatives I've run into, who are praising this guy because he is anti-big government, or suppose it. But yeah, if you look later on in this guy's manifesto, in fact, let me find this for you. Because you guys need to, you guys need to read this. Um, you guys need to. He Okay, so he worships Joe Biden. Um Uh, he's this is kind of hilarious um, he goes on a little bit of a rant about how the hangover movies are awesome that I have to agree with him on uh, he says don't make a third one anyway um He does compliment Chris Christie, but, um... Okay, now here, ah, uh, here's what I'm looking for. Here's what I'm looking for, folks. This is what many conservatives who worship this guy don't understand. So he says, so let me start this paragraph off because this isn't going to make sense. Um, but, unless I start off this way, but let, let me read to you this paragraph. Um, okay. Revoke the citizenship of, of Fareed Zakaira and deport him. I have never heard a positive word about America or its interest from his ma mouth ever. On the same day, give Piers Morgan an infinite, an infinite resident alien and visa card. Mr. Morgan, the problem that many American gun owners have with you and your continuous discussion of gun control is that you're not an American citizen and have an accent that that is distinct and clarifies that you are a foreigner. Yes, that's my exact problem with Pierce Morgan, as many conservatives. He do, He's not Amer an American citizen, and he, and he doesn't know anything about gun control. He doesn't know anything about guns or the American culture of guns. So... That is my problem with Mr. Morgan. But anyway, going back um, to the paragraph. Ahem. This is Chris Dorner speaking. Not me, but this is Chris Dorner speaking. Ahem. I want you to know that I agree with you 100% on enacting stricter firearm laws. But you must understand that your critics will always have in the back of their minds that you are a native to a country that we won our sovereignty from while using firearms as the last... Resort and defense, and you came from a country that has no legal private ownership of the firearms. This is disheartening to American gun owners, and rightfully so. Um... 
Um, He, he does give credit to uh, General Colin Powell and General Petraeus. I'm reading this silently. Sorry, folks, not to make the dead air, but... Um, anyway. He... Uh, he basically goes... Uh, he basically goes and says... Um, He goes and says, um, he basically goes and worships all the liberals, Obama included. Um, he does say that Charlie Sheen is awesome, and uh, Charlie Sheen made a video about that. Anyway, um, let me find the paragraph about Anonymous. Ah, here's the whole thing. Here's the thing on Anonymous. This is what I wanted you to hear. Listen carefully. This is mitten. This is towards the end, but you need to read this. Anonymous. Here's his statement to Anonymous. Anonymous, you are hated, vilified, and considered an enemy to the state. I personally view view as a culture and a necessity that brings truth to a cloaked world. Forge ahead. Folks, the fact that he was in alignment with Anonymous. That right there, I have major problems with, folks. I have major problems with him. Anonymous is a cyber terrorism group. They've leaked thousands of confidential documents. What they've done is not okay. It's not okay. Now, I have a statement for some conservatives out there. Because it's time for me to get on your backs, some of you at least, for worshipping this guy. Or for agreeing with this guy. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that you guys were worshipping him, but you were agreeing with him. And you guys were wrong too, and I'll explain why after the break. You're listening to the Whitfield analysis. And I will be right back in, in a jiffy. You're listening to the Next Gen Conservative Radio Network. Let's say you're worried about the direction the country is heading. Go to your computer and click on thejimmyzshow.com. Play today's show, and just like that, you know more than you did before. As you listen and click some of the links in the show notes, you feel empowered. Optimism follows, and you know just what to do. The Jimmy Z Show, conservative talk radio at thejimmyzshow.com. Hi, Jimmy Z here, inviting you to listen to The Jimmy Z Show at thejimmyzshow.com. Conservative politics with humor, irreverence, and colored by my Christian faith. On demand, 24-7 with new shows every Monday through Friday. The Jimmy Z Show, hated by the left for all the right reasons. Tune in anytime, day or night, at thejimmyzshow.com. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. The left tries to deny him, but they quite simply can't. It's Sam Whitfield, helping to lead a new age of conservative talk on Next Gen Conservative Radio. Yes, folks, that's my job. Helping to lead a new age in conservative radio. Here on Next Gen Conservative Radio. Folks, I skimped through the Chris Dorner manifesto. I'll post again to my Twitter feed after the show. 
and I'll have it in the show description for part two. For anyone who hasn't read it, please read it. The guy may be dead, but this is still an issue. And mark my words, I think Occupy Wall Street and Anonymous are going to resurrect themselves to this guy. The conspiracy theorists are already saying, Alex Jones already said that uh, it's a conspiracy and that the cops s set the cabin on fire on purpose to take him out. This saga is not over yet, folks. I don't think it is in anyway. We'll even be getting co we may be getting copycats of this guy. Who knows? Who knows? My point to some of the conservatives out there, and I don't want to. I don't want to particularly name any names, but for the purpose, is is of this, I feel that I must. Patriot Come Lately has said that he agrees with some of the things that this guy states. As I said before in part one, the corruption that this that Chris Dorner had to go through, going through the corrupt LAPD, it's unfortunate. But his handling of the situation is condemnable. And I do not agree with it, and it's shameful. This guy is not a hero. He's a cop killer. He's scum. He killed innocent people, too. It's not just cops. He killed... He killed some of the children of the cops, and... Um... It's just a mess. What? And I'm glad he's out of the picture. Anyway, folks, I will be back tomorrow with Jared Kovacs. Um, I've got some audio of Rush Limbaugh on gun control that you need to hear. Um, also, I'm going to try and see if Jimmy Z will come on the show, but I'm not positive on that for tomorrow. Maybe on Monday, since I have pre President Den's Day off from school. Anyway, folks, it's been a great show tonight. A great two-hour show, if I do say so myself. And without further ado, I'm Sam Whitfield. I'm broadcasting live on Next Gen Conservative Radio. Um, check me out. Um, I'm going to be getting a new website. Check me out on Twitter. Um, at Sam W underscore NGC, Facebook page, Next Gen Conservative, and I'm now also a contributor on Caden Calgar's CalgarNation.com website. So check me out there too, folks. All right, folks. God bless. Have a great evening. See you tomorrow evening with Jared Kovacs, and God bless. Next Gen Conservative Radio Network.